but there's more and first we're on to some jet skiing and it's an event that continues to dazzle the crowds with its speed and finesse the world jet ski finals As with all water sports, jet skiing has caught on as a competitive sport with crowds, substantial purses, and an enthusiastic desire to be, what else? Number one. It's like motocross on water. Competitors trying to make it around the first buoy and hold the lead on their 250-pound piece of machinery. Modern-day jet ski racing is high-tech, and if you're going to win, you'll have to have a name engine builder behind you. Sounds a little like powerboat racing, doesn't it? This particular event is the World Jet Ski Finals at Lake Havasu, Arizona, right on the Colorado River, and each year the crowds seem to grow and grow into the thousands, mainly because of the level of competition. The World Tour and the World Finals are put on by the International Jet Ski Association, which was established to promote good, solid competition, and more importantly, jet ski safety. Spectators turn out to witness three venues at the World Finals, course racing, freestyle, and slalom. Freestyle always seems to be a crowd favorite because of the enthusiasm and balance shown by a competitor during his or her routine. Slalom can be action-packed because it pits two skiers against each other in head-to-head -head competition for time. We've got an exciting closed course race between two of the sport's top racers up next. Don't go we'll be right back with more jet skis. <laughs> Right now, Classic Summer is taking a look at the World Jet Ski Finals at Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And as you can see, crowds of spectators use this week-long event to gather with friends, cool off, and witness some spectacular jet ski competition. It kind of seems like every year that all the eyes are on these two guys that you may or may not know. Larry Rippenkroger from Orangevale, California, and David Flash Gordon from Wayland, Massachusetts. In this race, the two guys hold the number one and number two spots on the world tour. And the Superstock Closed Course Race provided plenty of action. Sit back and relax as Mark Lauber and I provide the play-by-play. Okay, we're ready, and there we go. There's the green flag. The Pro Superstock Close Course Final is off and running. 15 laps of high speed and grueling punishment. And as they drag race to the first turn, it looks like Dave Flash Gordon is going to take the early lead. Well, Mike Yelich right alongside of him, and Gordon pushes him aside as he makes it right around that yellow buoy. Mike Yelich, number 11 in the world last year, currently in second, followed by Larry Rippenkroger in third. Well, once again, Dave Flash Gordon, easily identifiable, wearing that bright pink wetsuit out on the course this afternoon. Do. Check out the action on the right side. Mike, they're going down the back straightaway now, and Ripping Kroger with an incredible burst of speed overtakes Mike Yelich, and now is in second right behind David Gordon. Here's a nice perspective. You see the lead jet ski right now on board is Dave Gordon. Right behind him on his exhaust pipes is Larry the Ripper Ripping Kroger. He hails from Orangevale, California, just outside of Sacramento. Both riders riding for Performance Jet Ski, the same sponsor, Mike. So the jet skis are almost identical, so this is really a matter of rider ability. Kind of interesting it really gets down to like indianapolis car racing the cars are all the same it really rests on the shoulder or on the hands of the driver that's in control well off the start david gordon had the low end torque and a quick trigger finger to propel him into the lead and once you get out there in the front it is awful difficult to be caught well, one of the reasons it's difficult to be caught is you do not have to encounter the white water behind your jet ski. And in front of Dave Gordon right now, although he did cause a little bit of white water in front of him himself, but nonetheless, it's clear sailing in front of him. Larry Rippenkroger right on his tail still. Rippenkroger's been in hundreds of these races. 
He's usually out in front, but when he's in second, he gets very hungry. And he's just going to wait and try and pick the right moment to accelerate past David Gordon. You see Gordon with about a three-second lead over Ripping Kroger right here on the left side of the track. By the way, Mike, all yellow buoys are right-hand turns and red buoys are left-hand turns. Larry Ripping Kroger is a true gentleman, but you will never find anybody more competitive than the Ripper out on the course this afternoon. That's uh, Dave Gordon. He leads the race right now as he goes over the first log jump and uh, there he goes over the second now dave gordon in first larry ripping kroger in second that's the way things stood until lap number seven when the situation changed dramatically mike dave gordon had managed to hold off ripping kroger for a full six laps even though time and again the ripper had made repeated attempts to take the lead you see ripping kroger starting to show a little fatigue here as he had trouble with the log jump there's no room for mistake in this race right now. You'll see a lot of times the ski goes down. The body will actually fall into the water. It's at that point, Mark, they have to thrust out of it, give all the throttle you can get because power is the only thing that's going to drag your body out of the water. There's a good example. Well, at this point, your arms start to burn. It's a lot of strain on your upper body. And these guys are trying to go all out. You see them starting to pass some of the slower riders, and this could be a problem for both David Gordon and Larry Ripping Kroger. Well, Larry Rippenkroger spots his moment, and as Gordon will swing wide around the buoy, the Ripper cuts sharply and squeezes into the lead right there. Bad timing there for David Gordon as he got caught in the whitewater of a lap rider. Rippenkroger took advantage of the situation and ripped around him in a hurry. <laughs> well, I guess that's how he got his nickname. He told you early he is terribly competitive. This man does not like to finish second as uh, by the number of world titles that he owns. Ribbon Kroger started off the race in fourth position and has now worked his way into the lead. Well, he's running a very steady race as he comes around the far side and he encounters log jump number one, log jump number two, and Larry Ribbon Kroger is well on his way. We're going now to move to the final lap of the race. Larry Ribbon Kroger trying to hold on for just a few more turns and Dave Gordon hammering at him from behind. David Gordon certainly has the ability to catch Larry Rippenkroger, although he's got to be demoralized. You know, he was out there in the front, and he thought he was going to cruise to an easy win. Rippenkroger never gave up and continues to race very hard and strong, and he wants to capture his second title over Dager in the close course competition. Well, actually, Larry Rippenkroger simply took advantage of the moment. He saw a moment to break in and take the lead, and right around the buoy, he did it, and he continues his lead. There he is, Larry Rippenkroger, coming around the uh, red buoy, going through a series of S-turns, and he'll work his way to the Log jumps. Well, Ribbon Kroger never gave up off the start. He's having a great weekend here. He's worked extremely hard for this all season long, and it looks like he just might hold on for the win, Michael. Well, he encounters the last of the log jumps. It looks like it's going to be a close course sweep for Larry the Ripper Ripping Kroger, successfully holding off the charges of Dave Gordon and winning the Pro Superstock Close Course Final. An exciting finish, and Mark, a super race. And a fine performance by the second place finisher, David Gordon. Well, it was a real Donnybrook of a race, and there's your happy Superstock champion, also the Pro Modified champion, Larry Rippenkroger. What a day it has been for him, Mark Lauber. And Rippenkroger, by the way, edging out David Gordon in second. Derek Peterson takes third, Pat Pumprick was fourth, and Art Chambers was fifth.